Good Sunday morning to you all. Good morning. Happy 21st Sunday after the great feast of Pentecost. We're happy to see all of you here and we even have a visitor from Long Island who drove up, I don't know, yesterday? Friday. Oh, Friday. Okay, good. So she didn't have to make the round trip today. But, um, it's joy to have all of you with us this morning to give God the glory and praise. This is a very special Sunday for us because it marks uh, the uh, celebration of the Reformation, which happened uh, 500 plus years ago. In fact, uh, there's a special insert in today's bulletin, thanks be to God, to uh, Wilma for what she did to run off all the information about the Reformation in general and about the RCA in particular. And also we have Anne who did a special presentation she will today on Amazing Grace and a little bit of the story behind it and the words in today's bulletin. So today is a very Reformed Sunday. A mighty fortress, that's right. I get, I get my um, hymns mixed up since we haven't been singing. But uh, thank you, Anne, and thank you, Wilma, for all of your hard work. We come before the Lord today and we invite you to look at the bulletin for our call to worship. And we pray together. Let us worship God. He is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Let us confess with our mouths, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let us call upon our true God, believing him in our hearts, confessing him with our mouths, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Sunday after Sunday, we come before our loving and merciful God and treasure the fact that God loves us and forgives us for all of our sins. We pause now for a silent prayer and then we will offer our prayer of confession. Pray with me. Almighty God, we confess how hard it is to be your people. You have called us to be the church, to continue the mission of Jesus Christ to our lonely and confused world. Yet, we acknowledge that we are more apathetic than active, isolated than involved, callous than compassionate, obstinate than obedient legalistic than loving. Gracious Lord, have mercy upon us and forgive our sins. Remove the obstacles preventing us from being your representatives to a broken world. Awaken our hearts to the promised gift of your indwelling spirit. This we pray in Jesus' powerful name. Our assurance of pardon today comes from the book of Ezekiel. I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. You will be my people, and I will be your God. Friends in Christ, by the power of the Spirit, we are united with Jesus and given a new spirit. Live in the joy and in the peace of that assurance. Amen. Be attentive now, as all the poor reminds us of the great gift and the love of our God. Jesus continued to teach from the mountain. He said, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what you have done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. As you are able, please rise for the glory of Patrick. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. Before I read and pray this morning for the scriptures, I just want to take this opportunity to thank Paul and Mark and especially Tiffany who gave the message last Sunday on Laity Sunday. I think that all three of them acquitted themselves wonderfully and especially the message that, uh, that Tiffany shared with us about Moses and uh, God looking at Moses and uh, God's face shining. and seeing God's back, and so uh, we're very, very grateful for the participation of the laity in the celebration of Laity Sunday. Kindly bow your heads now as we pray. O gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now hear the word of the Lord, which comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew the 22nd chapter, verses 34 to 46. And this morning I'm using the modern English translation. When the Pharisees heard that he silenced the Sadducees, they came together. One of them, who was a lawyer, tested him by asking him, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. While the Pharisees were assembled, Jesus asked them, What do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How then does David in the spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him with a word. But from that day on, did anyone dare to ask him any more questions? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. 
In addition to the scene that Matthew pictured in today's Gospel, you can also find the information about the Great Commandment in the 12th chapter of Mark's Gospel and in the 10th chapter of Luke's Gospel. I don't know how many of you, when you look at the bulletin, look at what the title of the sermon is, but did anybody look at today's? Okay. Johnny, what is the today's title? Oh, now you're asking me. Well, you volunteered to, that you looked at it, so I figured it was you printed on your mind. <coughs> how many times? Anybody have any guess what that's all about? How many times? How many times you ask for forgiveness? That's a great idea. Save that for another sermon. Thank you. <laughs> I guess basically when I read the what is called sometimes the two great commandments or the great commandment, I wonder how many times you and I have really heard those words. We hear the words and we say we kind of shake our heads and say, yeah, that's true. And then kind of, I wonder how much of it sticks with us. Every Sunday or every week when I prepare the, the message for the following week, I try to think of how I might give the sermon a message title that would be applicable and help you to remember the gospel and the message of that day. And so I had come up last Sunday in preparation for today with the question, how many times? How many times have we heard the great commandment? How many times have we been invited to follow and do, listen to what Jesus had to say in those words? How many times have you heard this portion of the scriptures? I wonder if any of you could count them or know how familiar these words are to you. And especially today, how does the great commandment resonate with you this morning? As we enter into exploring God's word, I ask you to think of someone that you love. Visualize that individual, that person, right here and right now. As you begin to imagine that individual, think about the time that you first met. And what was your first reaction? As you're picturing that person, think about how your relationship may have developed. For some, it might have been love at first sight. For some, the relationship may have taken time to unfold and to grow. And maybe for some, the first impression wasn't all that great. The quiet of your heart and your mind, consider the journey of your relationship and how you would tell that story. It may be that the person that you're thinking about might be sitting right next to you this morning. You may have gone through some very hard times and struggles. There may have been times when you were apart physically or emotionally. And I wonder how that absence made you feel. And I ask if you were up to, to allow the floodgates of your memories and your emotions to open. For some, this reflection might focus on missing a loved one. During the last several months here at Shangham, I've walked alongside several people whose spouse, or child, or family member has gone home to the Lord. Each person's vision is very personal and very private. But what ties and grows a relationship together is a four-letter word called love. I'd like to 
step aside from the religious part of the sermon and think about the Broadway play that maybe some of you saw of the play or the movie called Fiddler on the Roof. Anybody saw that in their past? You might recall a dialogue between Tevye and Golda when Tevye asked Golda, do you love me? Part of their back and forth goes like this. Tevye says, do you love me? And Golda says, do I love you? The dialogue continues. And Tevye again asks, do you love me? And Golda's response is, do I love him? For 25 years I've lived with him, fought him, starved with him. 25 years my bet is his. If that's not love, what is? You might get a chuckle out of thinking about Tevye and Golda. and might want to hear their entire conversation. What that leads me to is a much more meaningful and beautiful description of love. How you can find it in your Bibles. All you need to do is to find the Apostle and Missionary Paul in his first letter to the church in Corinth, the 13th chapter. And here are just several of the verses that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So, no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. We could spend the whole day thinking about each one of the following sentences. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strive. Doesn't have a swelled head doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't reveal, revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, and always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps on going to the end. Returning to today's scripture from Matthew's Gospel, I first want to put the scripture in context, and here's a snapshot that precedes today's scripture quote in chapter 21. Paul tells a story about when Jesus, for the very last time, entered into the city of Jerusalem astride a donkey. And as Matthew writes, nearly all the people in the crowds with their garments down on the road gave him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David, son, Blessed is he who comes in the name Hosanna in the highest heaven. After his arrival, Jesus caused quite a stir when he attacked the temple administration and the practices of buying and selling that were taking place in the temple. Jesus fielded a number of questions about the legitimacy of paying taxes to Caesar and about his teaching about rising from the dead. And then, as the Gospel today tells us, Jesus was approached by one of the Pharisees, whose intention was to put him on the spot, to say something that would get him into even deeper and hotter water. Teacher, what is the first and the greatest commandment in the law? I know that last week when Tiffany mentioned the Ten Commandments, most of us would probably think the law is usually contained in those Ten Commandments. But, did you know that in the Jewish tradition of Jesus' time, in, as well as the Ten Commandments given to Moses, 
there were all there were a total of 613 commandments. And so you could see what a dilemma that was for Jesus when he was asked that question by the Pharisees, what's the greatest of the commandments? Listen again to the response that Jesus gave. Love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the first and most important of on any list. But there is a second alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophets hangs from them. Jesus said of, it's just one word. It's the most powerful word. Jesus said, love the Lord your God. In answering the Pharisees' inquiry, Jesus was using two very familiar passages found in the Old Testament. The first from the sixth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, which says, Love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love Him with all that's in you. Love Him with all you've got. The scripture is part of the day Judaism's most fundamental ancient and widely recited passage, which is part of the prayer called the Shema Israel. And then Jesus continued by quoting from the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, Love your neighbor as yourself. I am God. There is no better answer that Jesus could have provided. Together with these two scriptures, provided a clear and familiar answer to the question, what is the greatest commandment? It reflected a summary of the ministry of Jesus and his mission. Jesus pointed out that the purpose of both the law and the prophets was to orient one's life toward God. A very telling sentence I came across as I was writing this. One cannot love God without loving what God loves. I'll say it again. One cannot love God without loving what God loves. What is love? Or we might choose to ask, who is love? I offer this thought to you that love is God. The essence and the nature of who God is, is love. The life of God is love. God is love. God has always been, is now, and will always be. Love is God, always and forever. Love is the shared existence of the three persons in the one God, Love refers to the relationship of God the Father with His Son Jesus and with the Holy Spirit. Indeed, we struggle to understand or try to understand this mystery. And so we rely on examples to help us grasp the meaning and the reality of God who is love. Love is witness. First of all, in God's creating. Love is witnessed in God's saving activity. Love is witnessed in God's making holy with God's grace. God shares God's life and love with the Trinity, and God calls you and me into life in Him. God was so much in love with you and me that he wanted to show how much he loved and loves us. And that is the way that God sent Jesus to become one with us. In John's Gospel, the 15th chapter, verses 12 to 15, 
John explains it magnificently when Jesus says, I told you these things for a purpose, that my joy may be your joy, and your joy may wholly mature. This is my command, love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Put your life on the line for your friends. You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I no longer call you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. No, I have named you friends because I've let you in on everything I've heard from the Father. Spend time in God's Word. Spend time in thinking about God's ongoing call to intimacy and relationship with Him by basking in His Word. As we continue to reflect on today's passage of Scripture, Jesus then raised a question to the Pharisees to answer. Jesus asked them to talk about the identity of the Messiah. How can the Messiah be both Lord and Son of David at the same time? King David himself looked at the Messiah as the Lord of all. To challenge the group of Pharisees, Jesus offered them the quote from one of the Psalms written by David himself. It is from Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Messiah is truly both in the line of David and at the same time he transcends the lineage of David. Jesus was using this opportunity to teach his hearers that the Messiah whom they were expecting was God. This was not exactly what they had been anticipating. They thought the great military hero was coming to set them free. God's plan was significantly different from theirs. The psalm also points out that sitting at God's right hand is evidence enough of God's superlative honor and sovereign power. Jesus left the Pharisees amazed and speechless. Together, let us rejoice as we realize and remember that God is love and that our God is love. Let us remember that our God loves all that he has made in his image and in his likeness. Let us rejoice as we remember that as our God looks at you and at me, he loves his children. In conclusion, listen to the oft-quoted passage of John's Gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Sisters and brothers, let us give thanks to our God who is love. Amen.
Thank you, and you blessed us with that music today <coughs> as we celebrate the wonderful gift of the Reformation. One of the things that keeps us close to the Church of Jesus Christ is the prayer that we're about to say, the creed that we're about to profess. Please rise as you are able and join the Church family now as we proclaim I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Several announcements that we'd like to make this morning. Faith in Action will be meeting on Tuesday night at the 27th at 7 o'clock in Fellowship Hall. The Women's Fellowship wants to thank everyone who in any way made the recent chicken barbecue such a wonderful success. And we thank Patty and the crew for all that they did to help make that a very special event in spite of the, uh, the current situation with the virus. We want to remind everyone that the congregational meeting this year will be on Sunday, November the 15th. That will follow immediately after the worship service, and it will be held here in the sanctuary. So we invite that you would stay for that part of our annual meeting. The reports from each of the committees on and the consistory will be available prior to that, so you'll have an opportunity to review them in advance of the meeting. And don't forget that next Saturday, turn your clocks back, and uh, for no extra charge, we're going to give you an extra hour of sleep. <laughs> Standard time goes into effect next week. I'd like to just ask if my lovely wife would come up and explain this box that's here. Most of you probably know what it's all about. This is an Operation Christmas Child box. Um, what we've done in the past is we've asked uh, our congregation to fill these boxes, and we've collected sometimes way over 100 boxes, and they are combined with boxes that are collected throughout the entire country. Every church, just about every church does these boxes, and they're sent to children all over the world who need to hear the saving message of Jesus Christ. That's the most important part of it that the box isn't just given to children and say, you know, here's some nice gifts for you. It's given with the message, the saving message of Jesus Christ. So with um, consideration for the coronavirus, what Samaritan's Purse is, is asking is, if you can fill a box, we'd be very grateful. There's some boxes in the back you can take. There's a little slip like this. Um, and on the other side of it, it tells you a little bit about Operation Christmas Child. And you pick a child, boy or girl, or you can do more than one, and the different age groups. Um, and then you shop for little gifts. And it tells you in here uh, what not to buy and some suggestions what to buy. No liquids. Um, you can put in a toothbrush, but I don't think you can do toothpaste anymore. Um, soap, washcloth, um, but then fun things like a little toy, a coloring book, crayons, you know, that sort of thing. So it tells you all that in here. There is also an option if you are not able to shop, um, and Wilma was very kind to print this out, I didn't know you were going to do that, so thank you, um, and it explains why we're doing this, how it helps, but there's a website on here. You can do a, it's not a virtual box, they actually pack a box, but you do it virtually. You um, go onto the site and you can click on what you want to go in the box, you can pick the items yourself, 
or you can say, pick the box for me, you know, pack the box for me. And online it costs $25 to do a box. And they do exactly the same thing. They'll pack a box that looks just like this, and they'll send it to wherever they're going. Um, when you do this box, you're asked to put in a $9 donation for the, the shipping of the boxes. However, don't not do a box because you can't do the $9. Please, if you want to do a box, we have people who will donate the money and will cover your box. So please consider doing it. I don't know if any of you um, do a, a Compassion International where you adopt a child somewhere in the world who needs help. But what I can tell you is children who are benefiting from Compassion International, Samaritan First, any groups like that that are working with the children, right now those groups can't gather because of the virus. So these children are in their homes and away from what brings them Jesus, you know, what brings them community, what brings them love. And so it's really important this year that we reach out to them um, by doing boxes. So please prayerfully consider how and, you know, what way you can do it. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to see you after church. Thank you. Another note for next Sunday, for those who are watching us vir uh, virtually, we intend again on the first Sunday of November, November 1st, to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And if you would like to do that at home while we are celebrating here, you certainly can do that. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper as part of next Sunday's uh, worship service. Uh, there are several people that we would encourage you to pray for, especially at this time. Pray for Wilma's son, Tom. Pray for Frank Sigerman, who is in the hospital as we speak, that he will be helped by his hospitalization. And pray for his wife, Carol, as she is uh, concerned about his well-being. And a piece of good news is that yesterday, here in this very sanctuary, we baptized Carol Parker's granddaughter. So, where Kaylee Rose was brought into the family of God, yesterday afternoon and we did a great and wonderful thing yesterday again i don't know most of you hopefully how many of you got the news the november newsletter in the mail some of you may some of you may not have i want to close this part of the prayers with a prayer for voting it has already begun in new york state and in many many other states and i just would like to read this to you the prayer is found in our hymnals, but um, fortunately we are unable to use the hymnals at this time. The prayer was put together by the Reverend Peter Marshall, who served twice as the chaplain in the Senate in 1947 and 1949. And it was interesting in preparing this prayer, it was written before a hotly argued and very divided election. Does that sound a little bit like the current? But I'd like to just read it, and it's in the, it's in the uh, newsletter if you get it, and would, I would encourage you to pray it every day for the current elections in our country. Lord Jesus, we ask thee to guide the people of this nation as they exercise their dearly bought privilege of franchise. May it neither be ignored unthinkingly or, nor undertaken lightly. As citizens all over this land go to the ballot boxes, give them a sense of high privilege and the joyous responsibility. Help those who are to be elected to public office to come to understand the real source of their mandate, a mandate given by no party machine received at no polling booth, but given by God. A mandate to represent God and the truth at the heart of a nation as a mandate to do good in his name under whom this country was established. We ask thee to lead our country in the path where it would take us, would have her walk, to do the tasks that thou hast laid before her. So may we together seek happiness for all our citizens 
in the name of him who created us all equal in his sight, and therefore his brothers and sisters. Amen. Before I close this, is there any other announcements and or prayer concerns that you might have? Yes, Paul. Just a reminder that uh, for Halloween next weekend, the town has approved trick-or-treating from 6 to 8. They've also provided for a drive through by the Lions Club candy distribution. If you go on the Lions Club website, they will give you particulars on how to register your child at Vanderbilt Park from, uh, I believe it's 5 to 8. They will be doing a uh, trunk or treat. So there's several things that can be done for the children. And I just wanted to piggyback on what uh, Patty said about Operation Christmas Child. If you go online and pay for your uh, tab that goes on the box online, you can then go ahead a month later or so and track where your box has gone. So that, that, that's an option. We do that every year, and it's, it's a lot of fun to find out where the box is going. So Paul is, a, is replete with information about uh, Halloween and uh, some different opportunities here in the town. If you didn't catch what Paul had to say, please call him. And um, also that he was uh, re reaffirming the need and the importance of uh, the boxes. <coughs> and uh, if you want to follow them and track them, if you do it online, you certainly can do that. Thank you, Paul. Yes? And Judith Hart sent, car, sent, a, sent information, a letter to thank us for our prayers and our consideration. And this week we got a message from uh, Sarah Hull appreciating all of the prayers and the support and all the wonderful things that the members of the Shangham Church did to help her through this very tra tragic time. She found the support of the church so uplifting that it was a blessing to her and to uh, Sonia as well. Lord God, we ask you to hear us as we pray again and pray the words that are familiar to us. Prayer, a prayer of love, a prayer of commitment, a prayer of understanding, and let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'd ask that you would take home the bulletin that has the information about the Reformation in it, and those online will receive it uh, from uh, the appropriate uh, video sources. And let us now rise and be blessed by the Lord as we prepare to depart from this service. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and remain with you always. Amen.